Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Super Organized Universe radio show. It is Friday, July 31st, 2015. I'm James Lott Jr., your host. I'm the Super Organizer. Yes, the Super Organizer. And I'm so glad you could join me this morning at the end of July. can't believe that. Where did the summer go? Uh, where is it going, I should say? And with me to help out the day, we're bringing him back. We brought him back. The resident heartthrob. The producer, host, comedian, actor. He does everything. He's a renaissance man, Frank Moran. Hey, thank you. Thank you, James. I guess we're due to, due to somewhat popular demand, maybe. Yeah, that, yeah. that one tweet that somebody put out, that, that was just me. That was me. <laughs> you have that second account. That That's is right. Not your name. Yeah, we all have those, right? <laughs> no, just kidding. We don't. It's crazy. And as always, I'd like to say good morning to my partner in crime and all things electronics, Brian. If I was ready, I, it, there would be no <laughs> delay there. Sorry. It was a pregnant pause. It was like tweet, the, tweeting out the links for the show. Yeah, exactly, right, exactly, right, exactly. I just feel like I do soap uh, after shows, so it's like, I feel like a soap. You, you stop for a second. And Brian. Buenvenidos. Ooh, I, lo- ooh, I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. A novela. Nice. Uh, I, you know, I love it. I used to watch Amigos y Viveles years ago and La Reina de Sor. I used to watch those all the time. But Kate Del Castillo, she, she's so hot. I love her. But anyway, that's that's my that's my telenovela knowledge there. Do you know I, this? I grew up with it in the background as I was getting a beating. Oh, okay, great. So that, oh, okay. That's my extensive knowledge of, of uh, novellas. Novellas, so, yay. Yeah. Okay, they're so popular. Sorry to bring the show down, everybody. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, Pleasant yeah. association. It's it great. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of show today, kids. <laughs> so, um, but on a better, more serious note, I always do my thanks and gratitude. This is what I do every show that I do, and I'm going to do for the rest of my life as I on radio, because I believe in giving thanks to people and places and things that I appreciate, and being living in gratitude is always a nice thing to be. And so I'm going to start with my auntie, my auntie Cynthia Johnson. She is one of the most consistently, I don't know why I did that, broke that up, consistently loyal people that I know. And she will do for you. Uh, whether it's a big or small or anything, she is there. You call her. Homegirl is there, and I just appreciate her so much. And she's so hilarious. My gosh, she's hilarious. So thank you, Auntie. Uh, Cousin Jason. It was his birthday. Oh, my goodness. My microphone just moved. Um, My cousin Jason just turned an age a few days ago. I won't say that and embarrass him. But he's still younger than I am, so this really doesn't matter. Uh, But it's his birthday, and he's a great cousin. He's my favorite cousin of my male cousins. And he is nice. He's funny. He's sweet. Um... And he lives in Texas. I'm going to actually going to go see him. So, what's funny is no matter how much time has passed, we just pick right up, just pick right up, and that's that. It just it's just like no time has passed at all. And he's a great guy. And here's some here's a little something for you guys. Um, if anybody watches Days of Our Lives out there, uh, there is a tradition they do every Christmas. I even get a little teary eyed as they still do it. Um, it's the Horton Christmas tree. The Hortons are a big family on the show. And actually, these ornaments, they're from the beginning of time. Like, I talk to some people behind the scenes, because I do an after show for Days of Our Lives on After Buzz TV. Um, they actually have them in a vault, and no one can touch them <laughs> until their scene comes up to actually put it on the tree. Um, and they have the ornaments from every character that ever was in the Horton family since the show started 50 years ago. So what they'll do is, the ones that are currently on will put theirs up. But usually the one, then they'll pan around the tree and they'll show you all the other ones. And they're the original ornaments. So Cousin Jason and I are both Days of Our Lives fans. So about, I would say like maybe 15 years ago, he made me an ornament and made him an ornament. And I still have it. And every Christmas, I pull it out. So it's just very, very cool. So I still have it after all these years. So if you watch Days of Our Lives, you kind of get it. And it's kind of this kind of traditional thing that makes me smile every year. And then it goes back in the vault afterward? It goes back in the vault. There yes. you go. But when he told me the story about that, he said he really, they, they, everybody's nervous. They handle it like carefully with gloves. And it's just like, because I mean, you don't want to break, you know, Alice Horton's one and she's like dead. I mean, it's crazy. No. Yeah, you know, it's kind of crazy. So we do that. I like to give thanks and gratitude to my barber, Otis. Finding a good barber, hairstylist, salon person is super important. Someone who's allowed to cut your hair. 
someone who listens to you knows every cowlick and every every stray strand and knows how to tame it. It is very important. And Otis gave me a nice little haircut this week and a beer trim. And I appreciate him. Finding good barbers are, are just like trying to find a good dentist, doctor, gardener, plumber. How much chatting do you want when you're in the chair? Do you want a lot or a little? I think that's a really good question, actually. Um, well, because I know him and we live in the same neighborhood, actually, just like two blocks away from me, a lot of times we are chatting about stuff that's going on in our neighborhood. So, and there's some sports stuff. So if it's, if it's, if it's football time, I'm, I'm, my mouth is running the whole time. But there are a few times it's kind of like, I just want to sit here and like fall asleep. You do your magic, and I'll just wake up, and I'm all new. That's right. Or I just want you to get done so I can get going. I there want... is that, too. There, it, 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 that's, that's a good truth. The timing. It depends on the timing, right? If I'm like, I'm in a hurry. But I try to go when I'm not in a hurry. I try to go when I'm like, but there have been times I have been in a hurry. Kind of crazy. Well, how about you? Do you have a good hair person? I, I you know, I, I try at a couple of different barber shops. I usually go to Floyd's barber shop, oh, Floyd's, yeah, yeah. which I, which I do enjoy that. But it's always the ones that I've always used. They've always gone on, moved on to other things. So <laughs> it's just like it's like I'm playing uh, Floyd's roulette right now. Um, I wonder if it's you. I, it, I would not be surprised if it were. They, they, they graduated. They had yes. your hair, and they, they're like, we can go on to other things now. They're like, oh, we can get away, please. <laughs> if this guy's coming to this. No, we're, we're gone. We're, I'm, I'm moving towns, changing names. Because <laughs> that's interesting. Mine always stay. You know what's going on there? Um, so, yeah, so a, a, good, a good barber. I just want to thank Otis for all of his hard work and dedication to my face. And then uh, lastly, I want to thank all of my Twitterlings. Yes, my Twitterlings. They are... I have about close to 13,000 Twitterlings, and they are amazing. They will tweet the crap out of everything, and I appreciate it so much. They will share my stuff, comment, talk about it. They follow me on all my thousands of shows that I do <laughs> and my organizing stuff and this radio show. I mean, you guys are so – you guys are the best. And I said, I think I said today on, on my Twitter page, I was thanking you guys just in general. Just, I was just living gratitude because you keep it going, and you hashtag the things we talk about, and – um, this is a recent hashtag that started because I said this on the show is watch the monkeys. <laughs> and that's from the, I do, I do an after bus show for the uh, CBS series zoo. And I'm doing that tomorrow night on Tuesdays. And uh, I read the book and the book monkeys were prominent, but so far they haven't come on the show. And so I said, you need to watch the monkeys. And someone started that <laughs> just like that. I love it. That's when you know you made it when your Twitter followers are making hashtags based on things you've said. Yes, it's that's good, it. That's crazy. Yes. So they are the best. So my Twitter links. Thank you so much for the continued support. Thank you everyone for your continued support. Of course, but I just especially want to kind of focus on my Twitter people um, because when you're on Twitter, things happen. I should get on Twitter more often. <laughs> I guess that, that's where things are happening. I'm clearly missing out on this. <laughs> clearly, I've got like four followers. <laughs> four followers. Am I following you? I think I hope I am. I think, I think I am. so. I think so. Yes. <laughs> that would be sad if I wasn't following you. <laughs> I work with this guy, and I'm like, am I following him? That's kind of crazy. So thank you guys so much. And and if you're not following me, you can follow me at the Super O or at Black Hope LA, and that's B L A K H O P E L A. So thank you and gratitude to all you guys. Thank you so much. It's really appreciative. So, so let's get into the show. Today we're doing a all tips show so it's gonna it's gonna be a show where we're doing a little bit of organizing and a little bit of life coaching and frank's gonna comment i'm gonna ask him some questions too as we're talking about this stuff see what he thinks <laughs> what a tease yeah, what a ready, tease for the audience mm-hmm. right there yeah, see what he thinks see what's going on with him that's right in relation to this stuff so the first one i call um and on all my tips and, and stuff you can find on my blog, superorganizeruniverse.com. So I'll just know that. So if you're like, oh, I like that. When you want to print it out and give it to your friends or your mom, you have to do it. So my first one is called Do a Daily Sweep of Your House. Here's my suggestion to you guys. Well, if I may ask you a question first. Are you tired of stepping over stuff? <laughs> Absolutely. Are you tired of stepping on stuff? Absolutely. Are you tired of running into stuff? Absolutely. Okay. That's, that's okay. So now we're working it out. So one of the things, there's several suggestions I give. But this is one I think is so easy and simple. And I think it's, and anybody can do it. Pick a time. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, middle of the day. It doesn't matter when you decide to do it. Grab a, ba- a basket or a box or a giant container. Something that you actually hold. And that if you put stuff in it, it won't get too heavy on you. That's actually important. A tote bag could work. 
plastic bag, paper bag, whatever. Walk around the house with it. And then start picking up stuff that don't belong where it is. Throw it in the box, in the bag, the tote bag, the container, whatever it is. Put it in there. Just do that first. Go through the house. Go through each room. You're, you're, you're sitting in the kitchen, and you're like, that the stapler does not belong in the kitchen. It belongs in the home office. Grab that stapler, throw it in the box. You're in the bedroom. That bowl you had of, of cereal last night does not belong in the, in the bedroom. Put it in the box. James, what are you doing? Are you late, late night cereal yeah. munchies? Actually, sometimes it's good when it's hot outside and it's hot at night. A good bowl of like uh, frosted mini wheats or or bran checks. I don't know. Um, so I mean, it's good. So those, those things, or a bottle laying there, or you're doing your nails and you left the cuticle stuff there. I mean, put it, just put it all in a box, the bin, whatever it is you grabbed. That's the first step. Take a deep breath. And here's the part that's hard because we talk about this on the show all the time about making commitments, then put it away. Take everything in that bag and go to where it needs to go. Doesn't need to be neat and, doesn't need to be neat and tidy. Just to, Even if you're taking that stapler you took from the kitchen and you just put it on top of the desk. You don't care if your desk is messy. That's fine. Put it on top of the desk. At least it's back where the area is supposed to be. That bowl of cereal, I'm not asking you to do the dishes. I'm not asking you to load the dishwasher. Just put it in the kitchen, in the sink. So now it's not a bedroom anymore. It doesn't belong in a bedroom. And you'll notice that your your spaces will be a little neater. And is the is the hope though that by I, if you do this every single day, just through repetition, you'd get better about not leaving things where they're not supposed to be. You'd take them back originally. You put that stapler back in the office as soon as you're done with it. You are now a graduate of the Super Organizer School of Organizing. Oh, uh, where's my diploma? I know I got to make one for you. You totally got my, it. I'm moving my tassel over. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. That's the whole point. The point is um, you want to stop putting stuff where it doesn't belong. And hopefully you'll get tired of doing this exercise. There's a saying that organized people are lazy people. Think about that for a second. They say organized people, organized people do not like to look for things. I love that because yeah. we it's organized. We know where it is. No, that's very true. I mean, it, it, and I feel like with anything, that's like the the simplest thing to do. Like if you were just doing it every single day, it's so much better than than letting it slide. Because mm-hmm. the the minute you after you clean, you do a great deep clean, and everything looks fantastic and nice and pretty and neat. That one day where you just said like, I'm just going to leave these magazines here. And that's just the beginning of the end. Yes, it is. It just, you, all of a sudden, you know, you cut to two weeks later, and you're like, what has happened to this place? <laughs> and, you know, and you bring up a good point about magazines. Oh, my God. Papers, magazines, newspapers, books. Yeah. Literally, you have two. And, I mean, not even two weeks. Uh, depending on how you are. A week later, you're like, I can't even see the TV anymore. Because the table in front of me is full of magazines. It's ridiculous. I would say the, the biggest weakness in my household is mail. That oh, yeah. is uh, mm-hmm. junk mail, things like that. That you know, just go through it and just throw out the stuff you don't need at all. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of crud that you get in the mail. That mm-hmm. it's either junk mail or miss it, miss mail to you, and you mm-hmm. can just throw it away. But if you don't. You just stacks up and stacks <laughs> yeah. and stacks and stacks. <laughs> yeah. And then when you need to find that important thing that you realize mm-hmm. is in there, you're going through hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. of things. And you're like, why didn't I just do this sooner? Exactly. That's the, that's completely the point. It's just like I don't even get it. Just like if you start doing this. This will start to kind of train you to keep things where they're supposed to be. So when you use, because yes, of course, you're going to take the stapler. You're in the, you're in the living room. You might need it in the living room, of course. But don't just let it, don't just sit it down in the living room and then leave it there for five days. Somehow walk back those four or five steps to the the home office and put it on there. That's the plan. So you'll get tired of doing this after a while. And you're like, okay, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, and then you get it. Be- better to spend those four steps right away than, yes. than have to go around every single day and mm-hmm. have to put that stapler back. Yep. And, so that's what that's, so that's one of my tips. I think it's something and, and it really doesn't matter what it is you use as the conduit to putting everything together to walk around with. Like I say it could be a, it could be a ba- it could be anything. I mean a calendar, I mean I don't know, one of those calendar strainers, whatever. Just grab something that, that can things can fit in and then walk around. Hopefully the idea is that you eventually be graduating to smaller and smaller containers. Yes. So there you go. You're to just a getting, tiny box. That's right. Like a little coffee cup. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I left the thumbtack somewhere, and that's it. That's, that's your plan. <laughs> right. So that's the first one. And now for our second um, kind of tip, this one is kind of fun. And I think you might like this one. This is called – this is one of my most popular blogs of all time. Like I seriously was shocked how many – how many hits I got. Ooh, I can't blog. wait to hear what this is going to be. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And this is more of a life coaching thing. 
So let everybody get ready. So that was it organizing. Now I'm going to do a little life coaching thing. We will go back to work in a second. So when we come back after this break, we're going to talk about something life coaching like mm, that's on Super Organizer Universe Radio. What's up, this is Warren G, you know what I'm saying? I'm here giving it up for Rad because they do a lot of good things for people. Before you drink, make sure that you got somebody that can drive your butt home so you won't crash or get pulled over and get a DUI. So go ahead and follow the rules and everything will be cool. And don't be no fools. Peace, baby, Warren G. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You might know me, I'm 50 Cent. You may follow my tweets, my Facebook friends. Odds are a few in six degrees separate us. We're that close. What's crazy is one in six don't know where their next meal is coming from. These are your co-workers, your neighbors, your friends. Hunger's too close for us to ignore. So visit feedinamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank to see how you can make a difference. From one close friend to another, let's do this. I'm 50 Cent and together we are Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. My webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hey, neighbor, get some sod put in? Yeah, it's Marathon. Yeah, that's what I got, but yours looks so much greener and thicker than mine. What's going on? I'm going to call the growers. South and Sod Farms, may I help you? My Marathon sod doesn't look as good as my neighbor's. Are you sure yours is Marathon? That's what I asked for. Let me do a computer search. Mm, we don't have a record of your delivery. You didn't get genuine Marathon sod. What do you mean? Sometimes unscrupulous contractors, retailers, and other sod farms lead you to think they're selling Marathon, but then substitute a lesser brand. That really tees me off. How could I have known I got a cheap imitation? Look for the bold, genuine Marathon label on the sod pallets when they're delivered. Don't get cheated. Look for the genuine Marathon sod logo displayed by nurseries and landscape contractors at the Yellow Pages. Or call 1-800-4-MARATHON for a free do-it-yourself video and authorized dealer list. That's 1-800, the number 4, then Marathon. Or visit the website at www.sod.com. With containers, there are a couple of things to be aware of. Containers can be heavy and get really hot. A solution I found is the Big Bag Bed from SmartPots. They're lightweight. No, really, anyone from 3 to 93 can pick one up because they're made from an aeration fabric wholesale nurseries have been using for years. And they breathe, which is an important factor in developing stronger roots. Traditional containers don't do that. Grow this year's garden in a Big Bag Bed by SmartPots. Found at your local nursery, garden center, and online at SmartPots.com. And we are back. This is Super Organizer Universe Radio. I am James Slot Jr., the Super Organizer, and we're here with Frank Moran. Hey, James. And we're going through and talking about, uh, it's an all-tip show today, so we're talking tips in organizing and life coaching. So now, as I talked about before the break, hopefully you guys were listening and waiting, uh, this is an actual a tip that I talked about, and it was kind of a life coaching thing that was very popular on my blog. And actually, I wrote it a little less than a year ago, and it still gets hits to this day. The title is Three Ways to Get People to Like You. Oh, I need all three of these already. <laughs> I haven't even heard them, but I know all three are going to be very crucial to my life. <laughs> okay, so, well, I, we're going to talk about this because um, I hate to shoot my own horn, but. I'm very well liked. Uh, and these are things that I actually found in a lot of my networking over the years. I've been in different uh, different fields um, of work. And so networking, personal life. And I kind of put this together. Um, I, used to also be a, I used to be in nursing, and I, I've gone to school and stuff. And I've kind of started putting some stuff together. And these are kind of three things that I realized that have worked for me. And I know I've worked for others. Actually, before I wrote this blog, 
I brought these two other people and kind of took like an impromptu kind of poll, and they all kind of they all agreed. Oh. So maybe this is why this is so popular, I guess. So, and what I mean gets, and what I mean by three ways to get people to like you, I don't mean like you're trying to get them to kiss your behind or this is not this is nothing, this is nothing phony. It's just like you're just trying to get ahead a little bit, or you're trying to meet people and be nice and just kind of. These are three things that could help you have a nice exchange, and okay. people and and, be, and people walk away going, "Oh, I like him or her." Oh, all right. So the first one is, which I think is actually really important. Smile. When you smile, it sends a message that I like you. When you smile at someone, a lot of times they have a hard time not smiling back. Unless they're super just dour and mean and evil. Um, but in, now in science terms, a smile triggers a small endorphin release in the brain. So um, it kind of promotes a good feeling when people are smiling. Well, and obviously not smiling creepily or anything like that. But when you're just like smiling, when you're just genuine and you're smiling. Um, usually when you smile, they feel good, you're feeling good, and it supports the notion that people will like you if you make them feel good about themselves. No, I'd agree about that. And, and I would say that you may not consciously notice uh, somebody that's smiling at you, but you will definitely notice. And it'll stick around in your head like if somebody's not smiling at all during that conversation, when you're playing it back in your head later, you're like – Boy, he just looked sour. He didn't look like he was enjoying that conversation at all. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, actually. Sometimes when you're in the moment, you don't really catch things. It's later on. Because we all do recall, of course. Mm -hmm. Or I say the debrief. Uh, where we all kind of go, oh, that person was that person was really happy. Or that person was really jolly. Yeah. That yeah. person had a nice smile. Sometimes somebody's like, you see a nice smile. You're like, that person has a nice smile. Yeah, and so like somebody that like it was in, actually uh, excited to talk to me, was engaged, mm -hmm. they wanted to hear about what I had to say, That mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's going to make you like, I'd like to talk to this person a bit more. Mm -hmm. And that will lead, actually leads to my second thing. So after smile, number two is it's about them. And you just kind of led into that. Um, they say that empathetic statements keep the focus on the other person. Because people usually are focused on themselves. <laughs> this kind of happens. And if you're in L.A., it happens all the time. Um, and they feel good about themselves and let people pay them some attention. It's just, and I don't even mean that in a big attention-grabbing sort of way. It's just kind of it's in, a, in a basic level when someone acts interested, like you just said, in something you're saying or something you're doing, they feel better. Um, so it takes, it takes about uh, statements, a person's verbal message, verbiage, what you say, certain things you say. So... I have an example that I actually put together that I kind of like. Um, for example, we'll say that it's just me, and then there's a chick named Linda. So Linda says, I've been really busy this week. I say, so you didn't have much free time in your last few days, did you? So I'm saying to her, I'm, 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 I'm kind of talking to her, but it's kind of like, almost accusatory like, you don't have any free time this week like what does that mean so if you change it by dropping the so you in the sentence she says i've been really busy this week and i could say free time has been hard to come by these last several days right and then they go oh yeah it has been hard these last couple of days and blah 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 and they start talking mm -hmm. and you can still interject what you want to say too so a conversation forms because you don't want it so it's one-sided right well, I always think that's so dangerous, and I can find myself having that tendency <laughs> where I will I, – I love to hear other people's stories, and I, I guess I just – I lapse – because uh, I love interviewing and oh, I'll lapse into interviewing mode yes. when I'm talking to somebody, but yet be very reluctant to share anything of myself. Oh, wow. Wow. So I always feel like that's like that fine line to uh, where I, I often find comfort or just enjoyment in finding him more about others and less about sharing about myself, which can always backfire on you later on when people say, yeah, I really don't know much about you. Uh, mm -hmm. we've, I've, I've talked to you for all this time. I'm like, I know hardly anything about you. Right. But you know everything about me. So You don't have any kind of... Um when you do any networking or anything, you don't have any like go tos about yourself that you know you could you could comfortably share in a conversation. Or you know, I but I have to admit my weakness is networking. Uh, oh really? Okay. Because I I don't want to come across as phony or or I need those events where I feel like I'm only talking to you for what you can do for me. And I if I want to talk to somebody, I like to talk to somebody in just in a, in a genuine way and not yeah. feel like I'm trying to use them to for another means. And so. And that's something in my own obstacle that I need to get, okay. get 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 around because I know that those, it's just the way it's not. It's hard for me to ask for help sometimes, but mm. but I've also been told by many people it's it's okay to ask for help. But mm. I always feel like I don't want to inconvenience anybody. I don't want to mm. put anybody. Uh, 
in a position where they're feeling uncomfortable about trying to do something for me. Well, here's one thing that I kind of learned from a friend of mine that I'll pass on to you. Mm. No one ain't going to do anything they don't want to do. And, no, a close, and a closed mouth does not get fed. <laughs> Those two things work back and back. I learned, no, I learned that because I used to feel like I'll do it myself, everything myself. And I was like, wait a minute. Well, I'm in this kind of network situation where you are kind of talking about what you can do for me or what I can do for you. But if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. No, that's true. I mean, you can't make anybody do something they don't want to do. I mean, and that certainly goes back to being smiling. If you're somebody that's engaged and, and friendly, I mean, that's people are more inclined to want to help you and do something very, for you. That's very true. When you're friendly, people will – I mean, I find that out myself. When you're friendly, people will do for you more than when you're not friendly. Absolutely. There's a, the, the, with the, with the, well, Catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. You read my mind right there, James. Yeah, we right got there. it. We're right there. And it's so true, even though I use vinegar for certain things. But, yeah, no, it's – it's it's um. I just think that it's it's okay to not feel guilty to talk about something you want, but of course, of course, it goes back to your intent. Of course, I mean the way you come across. You don't come across snobby or grabby or like I I want I want I want. You know, uh, you don't want to be like Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory and I want to open Loompa now. You want nothing like that. Yeah. But you can also but you can talk to them and say you know yeah I, I'm, this is what I'm doing and I wouldn't mind doing blank. And if they're really receptive to you and you're smiling and you also are engaging them about their stuff. I will help you. That's true, and nobody's going to read your mind. No, that's true. So if you don't ask for something, then they're not going to know to, to, to offer that to you. They you, they may have a fantastic opportunity, but if you don't ask, they're not going to. They're just like, well, I'll just read his mind. I'm sure that he wants right. this, so I'll just right. ask out of the blue. <laughs> I wish that would happen, though. No, um, I'm sure I just show up and they're like, James, this is, I know what you want. <laughs> um, this saves a lot of space for me talking. Um, but yeah, no, I'm always a person who's always like, I'll be in a conversation, and I'll say, yeah, you know, I've always wanted to blank, 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 and they'll be like. I know somebody because then it comes out. I know someone who blank blank blanks, and then that, that and then that's how you start your media empire, right, right there. Exactly. Look, at that. Look right. what you've carved out. I have, and actually, yes. I have. I've, I've I've asked for stuff, and I've talked about things, but I smile to you. <laughs> you guys can't see me right now, but I smile all the time. It's a lovely smile, folks. Thank you. It thank is. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, the formula is keeping the focus on another person, and kind of away from you. Um, cause we naturally tend to say something to the effect of, I understand how you feel. Well, that's, you don't want to say that either. Cause the person automatically thinks, no, you don't. When you say stuff like that. So it's more of just kind of like making it conversational just kind of taking what they say, maybe just flipping it a bit back to kind of, like I said, yeah, this, you know, these days have been really hard to have time off. Right. You know, kind of like, just kind of you're engaging them and including them in the conversation, but you're still including yourself. So I think that's something good. So a smile, making it about them on some level. And number three, which is uh, one of my favorites, flattery can get you somewhere. Mm. The, most, uh, the most effective way to flatter people is allow them to flatter themselves. This technique avoids the problems of appearing insincere when complimenting someone. When people compliment themselves, sincerity really is not an issue, and people... And people rarely miss an opportunity, actually, to compliment themselves. So here's, here's an example of that, and we'll talk about this more. But So it's me and Linda again. You know, we're you know, hanging out. I go to Linda. Linda, how do you manage to stay in shape with your busy schedule? So it's kind of like when you say that, it's like you're, you're, you're saying, I know you're busy, but you look great. And so and it gives you an opportunity to go, well, Linda can go, why, thank you. I, I, I you know, I... I work out a little bit on Sundays. I mean, it makes them feel like, wow. And you're acknowledging that they're a working woman or they're busy. And they're like, so you're kind of flattering them twice. No, that's true. And I feel like anytime you're talking to somebody about something that they're passionate about or they have an enthusiasm for, when they start talking, they just can't help but mm-hmm. share it. And it, 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 they'll be complimenting themselves, but it just comes across as passion and exuberance mm-hmm. for this activity. Mm-hmm. And it, it takes a, it doesn't take that much skill. Just remember, you know, Try to, try to take yourself out of the equation. Not completely, because you want to be present in the conversation. But you just kind of want to say, okay, this person, I see they're wearing a Darth Vader shirt. So, I love Star Wars. You like Star Wars, too? Yes, I love Darth Vader. I love that shirt. I mean, just kind of, like, just simple, simple like that. I, like I said to you when you came, I said, I love the shirt. Mm-hmm. You're wearing Darth Vader. Something like that is all it takes. And you go, oh, yeah, I got this at blank, 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 and I saw the Star Wars films, and there you go. Yeah, that's all the work there for you. Right. 
Yeah. Seriously, when he's there, and there it is. And so then people, well, I like that dude. He was like, we talked about Star Wars, and he loved my shirt. And it's like, it's just kind of a, it's just, you know, you know every once in a, while, a little flattery is not bad. Yeah, and it, I I love to talk to, talk to people about something that they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. And it may not be something that I'm necessarily yeah, right, passionate about, right. but just watching somebody's reactions and how engaged they get mm-hmm. about something, that's always, I just love watching that. And that's such a good point, because you may meet somebody who you may not have the same uh, stuff in common and so because because we all know what it's like when you meet somebody you both like you, you love days of life so do i oh my god and you talk forever but what are the ones where you're like i'm not really into race cars but the way you're ta- but the way you're talking about it is kind of exciting mm-hmm. so i'll ask a few questions to kind of continue the conversation and then you move on to something else afterwards but you're trying to break the ice so you just have to take yourself out of it and go instead of saying well i don't like cars and race cars next Go okay. Well, so how long have you liked cars? How long have you driven cars? You know, it's kind of a few questions. Yeah, absolutely. And you and you do never know what uh, somebody might be talking about that you may not have had a passion for, mm-hmm. or you really didn't know about that. All of mm-hmm. a sudden, you do become a little bit interested, and yeah. you want to find out on yourself, right? And just saying a simple thing like, "God, your knowledge of cars is great." You know, it just uh, that makes someone feel good. Yeah, and they like you. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right, kids. I bring it all back. Um, so basically, my three tips are smile. It's about them, and flattery can get you somewhere. So try those sometime. See what happens, what works for you. I mean, of course, there are all kinds of other things you can do for people who like you, but this isn't about acceptance or um, like you're trying to make people like you, like you, but it's just like basic, just kind of friendly stuff. And if you're having a hard time figuring out, I know some people are not good with small talk or social, social situations. These are three techniques you could try, and that might be able to help you. Yeah. Or just bribe them. Wait, was that? Oh, that's. I'm sorry. That's a different show. Oh, uh, that works for me. I mean, money. I'll like you. Give me some money. I'll like you. Sure. Why not? I'm a. I'm a hardworking man. I can always use money. It's crazy. I'm a, I'm a person for hire for whatever. So that's that's for that one. So that's a very popular. One. Some people like that one for some reason. That was a really big one for me. Well, I think making making connections with other people is always something that people are always wondering about, and a way to make it a little easier for them. So I can understand why people would want to come by. There's some a little primer to help them in those kind of awkward social situations. That's true. Yeah, I guess they were they were getting a little a little action before they went out to something whatever they were doing. And then our next thing, we go we go back to organizing again. Kind of what kind of household stuff? Three forgotten places to clean. <laughs> Can't wait for this. Yes, this is interesting. So yeah, it's really funny because um, in organizing. Sometimes we have to clean a space. It's uh, or sometimes we work in tandem with uh, a home maid service, or they have a cleaning service. Um, I do some light cleaning. A lot of times when I work at a space, like especially in like, kitchens, bathrooms, like that, I can't leave a space dirty. A lot of times, I will clean the space before I put things back. I don't want to put things back in, in dust and dirt. I mean, I want to I make sure the space is clean. So when I walk out of there. It looks beautiful. It's organized. It's clean. The client's happy. So that's me. Um, and but when you do a clean house and when you make sure it's all organized, you gotta make sure it's clean too. And there's some places that are very visible. I walked around my house one day and I was looking and I went to people's houses. I kind of gathered this information myself. It's kind of funny. Um, that are visible and obvious. I built that up, didn't I? The top of the refrigerator. It's a spot that who thinks about that spot? No, I, I very I very rarely do. Exactly. Yeah. So I I encourage you to go home look at the top of your refrigerator. <laughs> Everybody at home, mm. look at your refrigerator. Um, for me, it's really funny because I'm tall, so I can see over my refrigerator. I know folks who can't, so they, they, they just, it's out of sight, out of mind. That that that's it for me too. I I fortunately have a bigger refrigerator, but my previous place it did have a shorter one, oh, really? so I could see the dust and stuff that accumulated, and that. Would get gross. I, it's but it's so funny because it's it's usually it's dust from like either um, windows that are nearby or stuff or just because you just never clean up there. A lot of times I know like uh, my daughter puts um like all the all the uh, the cereal boxes on top and extra things that are not in the cabinet that you use a lot mm-hmm. that she can grab down, but you're not really cleaning up there. You're just I mean, I'm not saying I don't know if hers is clean or not, but I just know that you put stuff up there. I have some stuff on top of my refrigerator, a couple of um, a mixer and my Ninja Blender, which I love, and a few things I have on top that I pull down. But one day I was like, I pulled something down, and I think like a whole, not a dust bunny, but a dust herd came down with me, and I was like, oh. <laughs> it was crazy. And I was like, oh. So then I actually got a step, just I didn't need a step stool because I'm tall enough. They just got me right over it. And I was like, ooh, this is like, a, it's as brown as I am. 
<laughs> okay, let's um, first organize this up there, and then let's clean it, and then clean it off. So it's very interesting. So a top refrigerator. Yeah, I would agree. I had an old, uh, like an old school ceramic uh, popcorn bowl, okay. and so I just put it up there. It looked really nice up there. But then when I was like, hey, well, I want to have some popcorn, and pulled it off, and just saw the enormous amount of dust that had built up in there. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's very interesting. The next one is, and I noticed this in my own sink. My own sink. I was like, I'm I'm a clean person. I have a pedestal sink, and I noticed this: the back sides of your faucets. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this funny? These are forgotten places. So the basin, of course, you clean. The knobs you may clean, everything around it. But like right behind it, um, it's it's looking right at you, but it's easy to miss. Um, it gets pretty dirty back there, and it's hard to clean. It's not one of those places for a lot of faucets. You need a scraper or whatever. You need something. You need to like do some towel action. I don't know, whatever. It's not easy, but they really get dirty, and they can really. I mean, it doesn't look good. No, I'd imagine anything that you can have, like the backside of an appliance or yeah. an item or something like that, that that is a place that I would, I would, yeah. I know I forgot yeah. to clean about. It's like the, just like the backside of my ears too. I'll forget <laughs> yeah. to clean. I'll, I'll forget <laughs> to clean that. I'm going to be looking at <laughs> yeah, the back yeah, of my ears. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a good question. We can't really see the back of our ears. Yeah. So yeah. So it's uh, I got tiny ears, so no problems there. I guess. Um, I produce a lot of wax though. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's not a golf topic for a second. <laughs> I uh, no. So back to the faucets. It's really interesting and. Because also, depending on what kind of sink you have, you have things on your sink. I don't have a counter because I have a pedestal sink. So my some of my basic stuff is on the sink also, which adds to sometimes clutter, which I have to make sure I make sure I don't clutter. My uh, toothpaste, my toothbrush, shaving – I forgot what it was – Shaving blades, um, and sometimes there'll be like the soap to wash my hands, and maybe one of the, and like a, a lotion, maybe. So it's like you can get a little cluttered up there sometimes. Got to make sure you clean that off too. But it's really dirty. The third one that I also found in my own bathroom: toilet paper holders. I, you know, I, until you said that, I never even thought to clean a bathroom toilet paper holder. Toilet paper leaves dust. It does. It leaves dust when you on the sides of the holder, on the back of it. Again, back of it, because um, the actual if it's one of those that's in the wall or something, the roll part doesn't get dirty. It's just the stuff around it get dirty, and it just needs to be dusted off a lot of times. It's like I mean, it's just kind of weird. Now, I I just want to know because I, that that has never popped in my head ever to think about that. Where, what was the case where you just say like, I wonder what's going on on the back of this paper, this toilet paper? Well, no, I, I wrote this down my, in my blog. I remember I was at. A couple of clients' houses, and I happened. I went to use their bathroom, and I saw it. And, and I, like I wrote in the thing, I said, I never, it never occurred to me to even clean that either. And then I went home. I was like, this is all dusty. It's kind of dirty. <laughs> Wipe it off with like a whole new. It was like a whole new color. Um, it was one of those things. I just like I never would have thought of that in my entire life. <laughs> Neither would I. See, oh, I'm scared to go home today. <laughs> I'm so scared to go home. All of you, if you're at home listening. Once this program is over, just go over and take a look at some of these spots. So that's the top of the refrigerator, the back sides of the faucets, and toilet paper holders. Isn't that funny? Just little, you know, little things like that. That's what I'm here for, education, to educate everyone. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, so, and so now I invite you also, of course, to look at other spots possibly that you don't really wipe off or, or organize or clean in your house. Because I'm sure there's more spaces that I just haven't looked. Maybe I'll do a, I'll do a, a sequel to this. Blog. I don't know. <laughs> As you investigate houses. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I want you guys to have a clean, organized house wherever you live. That's what I want for you as a super organizer. So, yeah, so there's that. Um, oh, and actually, someone, I forgot, and someone actually wrote me a comment on my blog saying he had one the indentations on exterior and interior doors, the dust collectors. Uh, that's, that I could see how yeah, you can just uh, kind of like the little gray dusty yes. things. Yep, yep. I was like, okay. I was like, well, I, was like, so I forgot the person wrote that back to me. I was like, I said good one on that one. That's kind of great. So I'm, I'm giving you all kinds of things to think about today, aren't I? You guys are just going to be full of tips. Now, again, you can find all these on superorganizeruniverse.com or on my uh, Facebook page with Super Organizer. So if you're just like, I can't remember all this stuff, I want to look at it again, you can. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back with one that I called Good Oral. (laughs) 
Hey, this is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers for Rad. I'm here to remind you that drunk drivers are still a major killer of young adults in this country. So always choose a designated driver and remember, music lives, you should too. Getting on in the state of Mississippi, Papa was a copper and a mama was a hippie. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi, everyone. This is Chuck Harold with my co-host, Oh, Tally Ho Bristow. From Security Guy Radio. Regard is a verb, not a noun. Every Monday night at 7 p.m., we challenge the conventional wisdom of the security industry with our plain talk experience, humorous stories, and answers from the top security experts in the field. Tune in each week for the latest security news, lightning interviews, and a look at a featured security gadget or service. Join us on the web at securityguyradio.com. And listen every Monday night at 7 p.m. exclusively on AdrenalineRadio.com. Do you love leather? Do you own a piece of fine leather furniture? Do you love the way it feels when you sit in it? Do you want to keep it that way? Because my name is Chris Lawler, and I own Leather Care Services. I'm in the business of restoring and maintaining leather furniture so that you love it as much in 10 years as you did the day that you bought it. Call me at area code 562-693-7676. Remember, Leather Care Services saving cows one hide at a time while cutting molding with a 12 inch dual compound miter saw while holding a newborn baby in your arms when face to face with a congregation of alligators with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line there are a million places you've never considered texting you're getting chewed out by so your why would you do it while driving on what nascar driver casey kane here in the asking you to please stop the text and, and together we can stop the wrecks brought to you by the ad council and the national highway traffic safety administration Get the message at StopTextStopRex.org. Close your eyes in Chicago. And you can hear the sound of zebra braying in Africa. Look hard out your window in D.C. And you can see the snow-covered peaks of the Andes. Stand on a corner in L.A. and feel the hot wind of the Sahara brush across your face. The world is that small. We are that connected. Please visit earthshare.org and learn how the world's leading environmental groups are working together, making it so simple for you to make a difference. Because we are many, and we are one. Please visit us at earthshare.org to learn more. Earthshare. One environment. One simple way to care for it all. A public service message from Earthshare and the Ed Council. Talk about a rush. One of the greatest drop and fastest roller coaster is the Steel Phantom. It opened in April 1991 at Kennywood Amusement Park in West Mifflin, PA. <laughs> That's a funny name. And it has a vertical drop of 225 radical feet into a narrow ravine with a speed of 80 miles per hour. <laughs> That's fast. And that's news that you can use from AdrenalineRadio.com. It's our song. And we are back. Super Organizing Universe Radio. I'm Jake Watt Jr., the Super Organizer. I'm here with Frank Moran. Hi, everybody. And we are going to continue our conversation on tips today. We will be giving tips of the home and of the brain. And they all work together, of course. And this next one, I, I, as I tease before the break, it's called Good Oral. It's a family show, James. I know it is. And once I talk about it, you'll get exactly what I'm talking about. Huh. It's not too early for this conversation. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, basically, um, as you can tell, I obviously have a radio show. And I do TV, and I've spoken in front of people, and I've taught classes and workshops. So obviously, I have good oral. I like to speak in front of people. I think it's a, a best way to get um, things across. It's a, it's a, they call it a high touch communication. We learn that in, in a coach school, where when you're in front of somebody and you're talking to them, however it is, that's the best way to get to them. It's even better than reading, better than other things. Um, but you speak in front of people. There are a few things you need to know. To be actually successful orator, Ooh, like that, yeah. when you a little oration, 
I give you all the different, different uh, types of that. Um, so I know they can be scary speaking in front of people. Do you like speaking in front of people? Are you okay with it? I don't, you, it's one of those things I think most people have, like in high school and things like that, the, the, those fears of public speaking. Yeah. But certainly, I, I, I would say, you know, I, I think I tied it into my, my uh, weight loss. Oh. Is, yeah, I used to weigh almost 300 pounds. And so after, oh, crazy. so very nervous, very timid, very awkward in social situations. But I had uh, a love for uh, comedy and hosting, and but didn't feel comfortable doing that in, my, in that state. But then once I lost the weight, I felt much more relaxed about myself mm-hmm. and felt more be well, able to be more outgoing. Yeah, so that makes sense. That's why it makes sense. And so this is something that I have, because I've conducted meetings, emceed events, based on TV and stuff. Um, these are a couple of things I've learned. I've also had media training. So these are things that I've learned um, that I want to share with you guys. If you guys have it, if you need to talk in front of, a, or excuse me, speak in front of um, a wedding or a reception or even a meeting, these are some things that I think are very crucial to good oral. At the beginning of, your, of anything you're saying, you need to set the tone. After you say your name, start with like maybe a short, quick story. Or a scene, or even a question. These are kind of little techniques you can do. Um, choose something with an important message, and make sure it fits the topic or situation you're in. So, like, don't say, you know, say like, "Hi, how about them Dodgers?" And you're at a place that they love the Padres. I mean, like, you don't do that. But you may say, "Yesterday, I was at the store and I ran to so and so from the Dodgers." And you're talking to a Dodger crowd. And people start going, oh, and I get relaxed. It's like, going, oh, okay. And then you just tell a quick story about it. And then you go, so now that leads me into our discussion today. One thing to do. Because you want to disarm them a little bit. You also want to show them that you are in control and that you are happy to be up there and ready to speak. Um, especially if it's a humorous event. So, and as you know, as a comedian, joke. Absolutely. It's the best Funny way to story. break the ice. Yeah, re- de- uh, ease the tension, get everybody just kind of relaxed and ready to hear what's, what's going to be. What are you going to be talking about? Are you because um, you do cause you do comedy? Mm-hmm. I know you do improv and comedy. Are you good at joke telling? Yeah, boy, you know, I, I guess I haven't done much stand up at all. That's one okay. thing I haven't okay. done. I've always been kind of interested, but I always feel like I don't know if I generating my own material. I, th- I find that would be. It would be challenging. I, would, I think if I were to do stand up, it would probably be more storytelling, sort okay, of. Say, uh, yeah. Yes, to kind of stand up. That would be my approach. Yeah, I was say, because I know people who are really good storytellers and not good stand up comedians, mm-hmm. and vice versa. And of course, the mixture of the two, like uh, like Kathy Griffin is my who, that, that's what they do. They're basically their whole stand up set is storytelling. That's I do like Kathy Griffin for that respect, uh, in that aspect. Just the way that she can tell the, those stories, and they, uh, just her comedic point of view really comes across strongly in all that. Margaret Cho's another one. There's certain people who, I mean, Joan Rivers. I mean, some people do the ba-dump bump, and mm-hmm. they do it really well. Don Rickles, people who just do do it really well. And others like a George Carlin who tell you, like, commentary or, or Chris Rock. And it's, and it's just like, it's a story they're telling you, but the punchline will come, mm-hmm. and it just sna- it smacks you in the face. Um, but I think that when you're doing a speaking engagement, like, if it's, if it's a funny thing or if it's something that, even if it's kind of endearing, like it's your brother's, Graduation. You can start out with a joke or a funny story about them if you wanted to. No, oh, absolutely. I, I, for some reason, I always find uh, like self-deprecating is yes. just a, it's a great quality to have in those situations as well. Yes. Now, with that, you gotta be careful. I, I um, and I will talk about that's number three. I'll talk about that in a second. Ooh, that's number right. three. We'll get into that. So, number two is watch what you say. If you can convey something in one sentence, do it. Don't take three or four sentences to say it. <laughs> Avoid words like um and ah. And actually, if you have, for me, it's so. I say so a lot. I know I do. And I've been working on it for the last, like, 30 years of my life. I know that it, it, it's something that I do. So I'm always kind of, like, aware of that. So whatever word it is for you, it's usually a short word. That's kind of, like, your comfort word to go to because you're trying to get to the next thing. Try to watch that. Um, but if you talk too long about something, people will tune out. I would agree. And brevity is always more is appreciated in those events. And I think anything, uh, if you use ums and uhs, that's sort of also start, I start checking out. I feel like mm-hmm. you really don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. And also that's something that's good for when you're, when you're leading a workshop or a course, um, being succinct is good. Because it's like people don't get confused. When you add too many sentences and words, people are like, I don't understand what. And you told me that. And you told me that. Keep it to the point. One sentence, if you can, too, that's good. Number three is the, this is what, as we were about to talk about, don't show doubt or apologize. So there's a whole thing about, I love self-deprecation, but as we know, sometimes it can be too much. Because um, you want to show them in you're in control 
and you want to show them that you are you are the expert, especially if you're presenting. You're the expert at whatever it is you are. And this is something that happened. I used to run conferences every year. I did 13 conferences a year for seven years. Um, and I would see a set up. We have, we have like 20 classes going concurrently. And so I would go in and set up, and then I'd watch some of the teachers just to see them get started off. And I remember having one that would come in and go, Oh my God, I just, I just couldn't get it together this morning. And I just, you know, I, I just, I, the car wouldn't start. And I just, I mean, let me, let me see if I can, let me see if I can work this class today for you guys. Like, that's actually not funny. It's kind of like, well, I hope this chick knows what she's talking about. I mean, I don't know what's going on. It's kind of like the, the audience is kind of like, uh, okay. She's telling too much information, first of all. It's not really, really funny. She sounds frazzled, but she thinks she's letting the, letting the class in on what's going on with her and that it's going to be okay. Like, we're going to do this together. No, that's true. I, I think you need to self deprecate with confidence, which seems kind of weird because that's kind of, but I right, think, right. yeah. It, but if you can do it just in a, in a fun, confident, kind of short, concise way and then just move on, I think that you, you keep the audience with you. But if you start opening your heart out and you're like, oh, this is what, oh, look what's happening to me. Oh, right? You're like, oof. Hold on. Yeah, like, I don't know this person's too much. Because uh, you just said, like, I, I say, speak with confidence. You are the expert. Stand up straight and look at people. I always try to find a couple of points when you're, in a, when you're in a room. And, you know, don't stare at them the whole time. But, like, you know, it's gonna, like, look at you for a second. Look at Brian for a second. Look at the screen. I mean, just like, look at just kind of, like, as you're talking. Um, if you're reading for something, because this is very important to you, like from an iPad or paper, make sure you look up frequently. And it was something because um, I just did, I just uh, officiated a funeral of my friend, which people who on this program know about, a friend Laurel. And I had my stuff on a, on a, I, I had my stuff on an iPhone. So I actually, when I came up, this is what I did. I go, hi, everyone. I'm not Snapchatting or tweeting this. I'm actually, my notes are on my iPhone. Everyone laughed. But it was just quick. I didn't, yeah. I didn't go on and on about it. It was quick. And so even when I read it, I would look up. Because I kind of knew a little bit of what was going on. I kind of skimmed through it and kind of knew what I wrote. But it was like, I would look up. And I'd find people to look at. And they would nod their head if I said something or smile. That's very, very important. Because we can't always memorize everything. I mean, mm-hmm. so you gotta, you got you to look down sometimes. Um, never come in and speak negative of yourself in a way that's really negative and apologize. I am so sorry I'm here today. I'm, I'm going to try to be a good teacher. Don't say that. <laughs> I know it's happened. Everything I'm saying, I've seen it happen. Oh my God! You know I'm here. Hello everyone. I'm I'm James Lott Jr. and my notes are really screwed. So we're going to try to get through this today. Uh, I've seen something like that. I've seen it happen. Be like, well, I'm cool. I'm going to leave now. Yeah. And see if I can get my money back. Right. Exactly. I mean, I, 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 I everything I'm saying it sounds almost ridiculous, but I've seen it happen. Um, the baby. One example I use. The baby kept me all night. It took forever to get here. I may forget some stuff. Please forgive me. <laughs> I've seen it too. I, I've heard it. It's like, then why did you come? Then? Right, exactly. And trust me, they got talking to you afterwards from me. Um, but don't even do it when you think it's comical. Because some of them, I think they thought it would be funny that you would relate. Oh, people who have babies, you relate to this. But in this situa- these situations, you're the expert. You're not their peer, so to speak. You're here. They came to you. They signed up for the class or the workshop to get what you have. Yeah, it, not to feel sorry for you. Right. Or like, oh, okay, I, oh, I can relate to this person. No, I don't want to relate to you. I want right. to learn from you. Right, exactly. So it's kind of, it's just kind of, it's, that's crazy. Um, and number four, which I think is always a great one, because I love interactive participation, engage the crowd. Engage the crowd. I mean, and then if it calls for it, make the session interactive, do a, uh, you could do a, a quick little word association thing or whatever. Um, ask them a question that requires more than yes and no answers. That's something you, that takes an art a little bit too, actually. How to ask people questions because you're an interviewer, so you mm-hmm. know to say something more. If you say something, they go yes. Okay, how can I phrase <laughs> yes. that differently? So I'm gonna ask you. So as as a host and as an interviewer, have you have you ever had any interviews where it was just like. I couldn't get you couldn't get the questions. Just couldn't get them together. Just couldn't. There, there have been a couple where I, where I did a behind the scenes movie show, and so I was interviewing some people for a, a Mark Wahlberg film that came out a couple years oh, ago. Wow. Yeah, and so I was uh, with it was a combination. I was talking to uh, to an actor, Giovanni Ribisi. And oh yeah. It was just yeah. Uh, I man, it was a combination of his not really wanting to chat a lot and me just <laughs> feeling like the questions weren't there, and just it just made for a very stilted conversation <laughs> where. It, <laughs> I just ask a question and it would just kind of hang there, and he kind of oh. think about it and then shrug and maybe give an answer. And I'm like, oh, oh. this is this is gonna be. A, and even though the interview was only 
five minutes tops. That's a long five minutes. It felt forever. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Giovanni. <laughs> so are you better at compiling questions when you do? I think so because I, I, you, you want to lead questions. That you want to make this person talk. You want to learn about them. You want to find something that if you can answer, if you give them a question where they can just say yes or no, they're going to give you the shortest answers, answer right. possible. So to try to find something that's going to get them to elaborate, yeah. that's always a challenge. And make it not – because the last thing you want, especially it, depending on the audience mm-hmm. that it is, for a lot of things, that, there are a lot, a lot of questions that people just like the cliche questions yes. that they go to. I was going to say so, that. Yes. yes. And people will just kind of check out and give you a very rote answer. And those are the worst, too. So try to find – it's not just – you can also get a yes or no answer, but you can also get a very rote answer, too. And you want to avoid that as well. You bring up a great – I was going to – we're like in sync today. I was going to say that I know for me as an interviewer, I always always ask the questions like, – because I, I co-interview with somebody else, usually for the – they call Spotlight Ons, and I'm doing one next Wednesday, another one, where he kind of asks the general major questions like that. I'm always the one who comes up with the stuff that I did to really – they go, you really did your research. I feel like James Lipton from Inside the Action. I'm like – and so when you were 12 – you know, I find that question, like, for example, with a, a guy, I'm like, you're from Buffalo, New York. He goes, yes, I have family in West Seneca. And so then that became a great little discussion. I feel like anytime you can do any any research and really get into the subject or the person that you're mm-hmm. going to be interviewing, that is, it seems like it's so much more appreciated because yeah. the questions you can give, you can ask them are a little bit more deeper than what they're usually mm-hmm. getting. And you get, they get a little bit more engaged. Because they, they hear, like you said, if they're on a press junket especially, they've heard the same 10 questions. How's it like to work with Julia Roberts? How's it oh. like to work with, you know, like you mean, okay, anyway. Well, I always ask question like, so I heard Julia Roberts really likes uh, papaya in the morning. Have you seen her eat papaya? And they'll, <laughs> and they'll usually they'll laugh. They'll laugh and they'll go, uh, I, either they'll give a really good answer like, I didn't, I've never seen her, or they'll tell you something else that happened. They'll go, mm-hmm. well, I didn't see eat papaya, but things like that. I think it's it's good. And you try with anybody, not even just when you're, not even just when you're interviewing people or, or anything, just, I mean, literally in your regular life when you're talking to other people. And, again, going back to getting people to like you, find out something, you know, if you, if you hear them say something as they're talking, that means being fully present in the conversation, of course. You hear them say something, pick up that one word you heard and maybe make a question out of that. Yeah. I, 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 one of my favorite interviews was uh, with uh, Taylor Leone and Helen Alda oh, together. Oh, so, my God. Yeah, I love them both. Them. Yes. So I uh, interviewed them. And just it was great just talking about how they if they'd ever planned their own heist because it was for the movie Tower <laughs> Heist. And so <laughs> Taylor Leone just calling me a criminal. And then oh, Helen Alda actually taking the time to actually break it down with me. And I was oh like, my, oh, this is so great. Oh my All God. right. Yes. Oh, I love that. Very jealous. I like that. See, I love this kind of stuff. So I do. I When I research, I get into nitty gritty. I, I love that because I just feel like I want to. I want to know about this person. Yeah. I want to feel like they. I've taken the time to get to know something that you've right. done, and right. I want to talk to you about it. And we know that a few of them, of course, there's certain questions you have to ask, of course. So the few you have to, you have to go and do it, but it's it's great. So one last thing before we actually end this, and this is a this is very short and sweet. There's one thing I've learned that I am very proud of. I've learned that it's okay to say no. In what situation? In any situation. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is that you can, you can say, you can say no. <laughs> no, you, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. Um, there are things that happened in my life. I said no. If you want time to think about making a commitment before saying no, you can say, can I get back to you? You can say, sounds good. Let me get back to you. Um, if it has to do with any kind of like calendar issue, let me get back to I let me get to my calendar and I'll get back to you. If you're afraid to say no first, you can you can there's things you can do to stave it off for a minute. But in the ultimate universe, you can say no. It's okay. Because there's so much about people saying yes to things. Yes. But it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. Come on, Brian. You can say no if you want to. You can do it. <laughs> and that is our show for today. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, Frank that you were here. Oh, James, thanks for having me again. I'm, having, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have to have you back again, of course. And tell the folks out there where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I guess I should I should tweet more often so yes. I can get some of those followers going. Yes, yeah, I got to get up to thirteen thousand. We'll get you there. Uh, happy go Jackie. That's uh, J A C K I E. Not yes. a why. Not a why. Not a why. Why? Because we love you, That's right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you can catch me uh, every other Tuesday night at Iowa West uh, playing with my improv team, Max. When my current two shows are up on Tuesdays, I'm coming out there to see you. All right. Uh, and you can find me, of course, on all the interwebs. You can find me at uh, Twitter at the Super O or Black Hope LA, which is B-L-A-K-H-O-P-E-L-A. You can also find me on Facebook. I have a new fan page, James Law Jr., 
Or you can also follow me, of course, at the Super Organizer on Facebook. Then, of course, on Instagram, I am L Black Hope. That's E L Black Hope. And that's still B L A K H O P E. And then on my blog, the superorganizeruniverse.com is where you can find all these things I talk about. And then, of course, the granddaddy of them all, my website, the superorganizer.com, if you want to hire me. I am a speaker, organizer, life coach for hire. Hire me and host. And once again, thank you so much for joining us this Friday. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you guys next week. Mm